Hi, my name is Seth and welcome to my 12th house series. So I'm going to be taking this time to talk about a specific sign in the 12th house. If you don't really understand what the 12th house is, if you don't understand a lot about that sign, if you don't actually know what sign is in your 12th house, I put a few links right up here <laughs> to give you guys some references on where to look and where to find this information. Then come back to the series and look at specifically what's going on in your 12th house and engage with me on what that means to you and what that means for what you're trying to do in this world. Hey guys, today I want to talk about having Leo in the 12th house. Um, this is actually my favorite 12th house to work on. Um, I have a lot of Leo energy in my chart. I have a lot of Leo energy in my chart. And um, to see this placement, it kind of like, I really want to help you. Because <laughs> um, I enjoy like Leo energy. I enjoy the, the fun of it and the excitement of it and the almost brimming out of control energy that Leo can bring to any type of situation and it's something that you guys with Leo in the 12th house need to embrace and start bringing into your life and people like me with a lot of Leo like we're prime examples of everything you don't want to be <laughs> or everything you really really want to be it, it depends but either way we have a lot to learn from each other. With Leo in your 12th house, you have a Virgo Ascendant. Um, this Ascendant is, again, not so much of a haze. Virgo sees a lot. Virgo needs to take the time to disassemble and reassemble everything they see. It's something that they perfect with time. That's why you usually find with Virgo children, kids with a lot of Virgo, they pick up on things very quickly. They master things very quickly. And it's because when they were little, they figured out their brains work that way. And by the time they were 10, they most likely mastered however their brain works. They've most likely mastered however they learn, however they see things, however they understand things. And Virgo have a way of, like everyone knows, having a little bit of a perfectionist sort of side, having a bit of a purist sort of side to them, and it's natural for them. I keep saying them, it's natural for us. <laughs> um, and having that Virgo energy on your ascendant means that it's something that you did. You did do this. You figured out how your brain worked and you figured out how to master things the best way for you the, as quickly as possible, the way that you feel is perfect. But you did not understand that from the beginning. I don't feel an ascendant makes itself present and makes itself obvious until people notice it. Because I don't, I honestly don't feel like when, until you learn about astrology, you don't see your ascendant. Other people see your ascendant. You don't see it. It's like looking down at your skin like you nobody's gonna tell me I'm black like I didn't know I was black until I was told I was black I'm black like you know what I mean it's it's the same thing I, I never really understood that I, I had cancer energy until somebody told me I was a cancer ascendant and I figured it out and then it made sense to me it's gonna be something that you grew up with this Virgo energy it's something that you do automatically you just have your ways it's just going to be something that you see is your ways like i just like to do things this way i just feel like that's the best way to do it other people don't do it that way it kind of makes me feel funny like i don't know they could be doing so much better for themselves if they just act like me um you have a way when people need help you already knew that you're always willing to help because you see that people need help and you're just really proud of them for asking and you're so ready and willing to show them how you've not had that problem or how you've overcome that problem and you're really happy to go and show other people how to do the same thing unless you're a pushy virgo who wants to come in and fix that problem and have them sit back and have that not be a problem anymore and it's just well i'm just going to do it i'm going to do this for you i'm going to fix this problem you're not going to have this problem anymore because i'm here um it could go that way if you're more of a pushy type of virgo so having leo in your 12th house it could stem back to a childhood sort of thing where your parents or guardians kind of 
either told you or showed you that arts, freedom of expression, um, a craving for attention, these sort of things were nonsensical, were a waste of time, were kind of stupid and a show of weakness and a show of unintelligence to want to have all lights on you, to have all eyes on you, to have attention, to want to go and draw and write and sing and make yourself present. And maybe not so much for your mind, but just make yourself present because you're proud of who you are or you're proud of what you bring to the table. Or even if you're not proud of it, just wanting to be out there and, and feeling like it's okay to want to be in the spotlight. That's something that just when you see people like that, it's just what's wrong with them. I don't understand why they have a drive for that. I don't understand why that's their ideal of success. And it sort of became something that you suppressed as you grew up. You don't like to be in the spotlight. You don't like to have all eyes on you and have a ton of praise and have people tell you how great you are. It kind of feels like stupid. It's not about me. It's about my work. It's not about me. It's about my mind. It's just not about you as a person. You don't want things to be about you. When you get comfortable around people, when you get comfortable in the scenario, this 12th house kind of makes itself a little more present. You become willing to let this energy out that you usually only let out when you're by yourself. And this energy that you're letting out is Leo. It's a leadership sort of energy. You might be a take charge type of person when you're with a group of friends that you're extremely comfortable with. And when you're in a scenario that you're very comfortable with, that lead those leadership skills make themselves present. The idea of someone putting their name on your work, which might not bother you, or you might suppress how it bothers you in a normal situation. Once you get comfortable, you're not going to stand for it. You make sure that your name is on everything. You make sure that everyone knows what you did and what you brought to the table. And when you're by yourself or comfortable with people, you express yourself a lot more easily. And you start to show that you know how to express yourself, not just express a singular thing that you picked and chose to put out there. You just express who you are without any real hangups. You start to be the type of person that can broadcast what they want, really know what, what they want to ask for and broadcast what they're asking for. Make sure everybody in earshot hears it so there's the best percentage of you getting it. Something you might not do in a normal situation. Something you might do when you're at home. Something you might do when you're comfortable with your friends. You might subconsciously start to pick friends that adore you. Um, start to pick people that you know once you get alone and you start to let these things out that they will love it. They love this person that you are when, when you're by yourself. They love this type of energy that you give off when you get really comfortable and they, they see the difference between you and the outside world and you at home and they definitely prefer you at home. You might end up gravitating towards people who are a little more meek like you so you can dominate later. And um, Vir having a Virgo send in will have that capability. You have the mind where you can put two and two, four and four, all whatever needs to be put together, put together, and manipulate situations so that things happen that way. So that when you're alone with your friends, you can be dominant and nobody else will know. You also can put on a show. Once you get these people by themselves, once you are by yourself, you focus on putting on a show. You focus on letting these energies out and, and doing things that make you feel good and eating things that, that taste really good and just giving yourself the best of the best. You treat yourself when you're by yourself. You don't expect anyone else to do it for you. You don't really want anybody else to do it for you. You'll give yourself exactly what you feel you deserve. And that's a lot when you give yourself that chance. So the thing about having Leo in your 12th house is bringing it into your life. Because who's to say this part of yourself that when you're comfortable with your friends or when you're by yourself, who says you give that enough time for it to matter, for you to feel healthy, for you to feel whole? You want to find a balance. And you want to bring Leo into your life enough that it's comfortable and you're still yourself, but your 12th house is not so locked away from you because you're missing something when your 12th house is locked away from you.
this is where your sixth house can come into play. Having Aquarius in your sixth house means you are prone to unique scenarios, unique schedules, unique job situations. You like to have an unset schedule, something that's just not too tight. Even though Virgo thrives off of that, you might be able to find that in between where you have schedules for things that need schedules. But for the most part, anything that doesn't need a schedule at work, you let yourself freelance a little bit. You let yourself have that little bit of time where I can schedule it myself. Nobody else is going to schedule it for me. That might be how you do it. But having Aquarius there is a call for a little disharmony. Uranus is there in that, in that energy asking for a little bit of disharmony. Asking for a little bit of freedom for you to schedule the way that you want to schedule. And to do things the way that works for you instead of conforming to the world. You also bring into that energy the idea of not caring what people think about you. And that is where disharmony can really come into play with your 12th house. Because no, you shouldn't care what people think about you. But you should care if people like you. You should care if people give you attention or not, give your work attention or not. You should not only be looking on yourself for gratification in your work. You can become very selfish that way. You can become very downside of Leo without even knowing it and becoming extremely self-absorbed that way. Doing things for yourself instead of for a community because there's a part of you that you're not giving enough attention that wants attention. And then you'll start to pretend you're not doing things for attention when you know that you are. And you use that Aquarius to get attention instead of using that Aquarius to better the world. That disharmony can just be creative energy if you let it be. If you go into that 12th house and pull out some dazzle, <laughs> pull out some of, the, some of the stops that you know you can pull out. You have tricks under your sleeve. You have Leo in your 12th house. You can pull out this energy anytime you feel like it and completely flabbergast and dazzle everyone around you anytime you feel like it. As long as you have a balance between your 12th and your 6th house, that flair can get you a job interview. And your hard work will land you that job. But there's a need for that. There's a need to show off every once in a while. There's a need to make sure that you own your power every once in a while and not give it away. And not give it away saying that, oh, I just don't care. It's not important to me to have my name on things. It should be. Leo's there for a reason. There's no sign as in the Zodiac to, to be ignored. There's no sign in the Zodiac that's there to just not be of use and for you leo is there to be of use but you just don't understand how to use it when you're drunk you become acquainted with this energy when you get introduced to alcohol you become more brash you become a more of a typical drunk the type of person as soon as they get a few drinks in them they're loud they're everybody's friend they want to gamble they want to be in the middle of the party they have tons of friends they're dancing they're doing all the leo type things they are the party once you start to get some liquor in you you can make the party go to any boring party get drunk and you will start a party and there can be a downside to that because i'm sure anyone that knows anyone who's a Leo or has strong Leo energy is that you can become a little tyrannical and you might actually become an angry drunk. Someone who starts to want to tell everyone what to do, especially with the Virgo Ascendant and, and take control of a scenario. When if things aren't going exactly the way you want it, if there are other people there who are having a bigger party than you, jealousy might come into play and things can just go bad very quickly. And Either way, it's good to get introduced to that energy. It's good to understand what you're capable of. That tyrannical energy, that, that need to control, it's good to know that you're capable of that so you're not surprised later when you do it sober. And seeing the parties that you can start and the fun that you can have and how free and happy and joyous and glowing you can be at a party, that's good to know 
so you can bring that into your life when you're sober and start to understand that you have creative energy that needs to be let loose know your self-worth because you have pisces in your seventh house which means that you could really get yourself into situations where people do not appreciate you people want to walk all over you and with leo in your 12th house you might let them take your power indulge that leo energy and understand your power understand that you need respect and not just the type of respect for your work you need personal respect respect me because i'm a person and not because i'm good at what i do i could be horrible at what i do i could not have a lot of money i can be totally ugly totally fat totally anything but you still have to respect me because i'm me because i said so that's leo energy they don't give a fuck they're gonna love themselves no matter what they're gonna love something about themselves no matter what and they're gonna demand that you respect that no matter what so in conclusion I would say have fun start whenever the things that you do by yourself drawing or singing or whatever whatever you do by yourself that makes you feel good those things that you indulge in that you just don't have time for when you know you're busy and you feel you just don't have time for those things but you know you love to do them bring those things into your life make them a big part of your life purposely factor them into your schedule make them higher on your priority list and you will start to see that your life feels better and you will start to see that people appreciate you for your gifts and that matters because it makes you feel good it doesn't have to matter on paper it needs to matter to you and you'll start to see that your life balances out you feel better the people around you feel better about you and you're all in all happier thanks for watching subscribe leave a comment if you have something to say about the video shoot me an email if you want to talk more about this placement if you have this placement and uh yeah thanks for watching